Hello, I'm Junya Masaki. I'm Product Solution Manager for HPE. I'm in charge of content management, and today I would like to show you Media Workflow Master, which is actually a HPE product. Um, Media Workflow Master 3 is a digital asset management system tied in with a workflow manager, a resource manager, as well as a monitoring tool. Um, when I say resource manager, it actually does not only do technical, but also human resource management. Uh, it's based on a uh, virtualized uh, infrastructure. So right now it's running on a VMware. And the vertical as well is, um, is open. So the, the whole concept of it is being as open as possible so that we can hook up some um, uh, functions um, as easily as possible. It's based on SOA, uh, service-oriented architecture, uh, so REST API, FIMS, uh, to, uh, to uh, interface with a Selenium Flex file, for example. It's running on a thin client, so you can access it from anywhere, Starbucks, McDonald's, uh, anywhere in the world, okay? So this is the, uh, the main screen, uh, the home page, where you have, uh, when you log, once you log in, you have, your, you have your tasks, which I will explain later, and then you have your work orders, which are actually workflows. So I would like to show you um, at the very beginning how you, you uh, check in an asset, because this is, at the end of the day, it's a digital asset management system. Uh, keep in mind that you know, we can automate everything that I'm showing you. I'm just showing it to you because uh, there are some very key points um, in, in what I'm, I'm going to show you. So right now I'm just selecting uh, where the content is, so the site, the workstation, and then finally the folder. So I will select my content. Once I select it, it will, get, it will tell me that this actually, it recognizes that it doesn't have any audio language. It does have music background, but it doesn't have um, audio. So he wants me to select it. Not a problem. Extracts all the technical metadata. That's pretty common. So nothing special here. Uh, you select the, uh, the language, and then the container is already there. So it automatically extracts all that uh, technical side of the metadata. Now, this is where it becomes more interesting, where you do, uh, you, once you've put your um, unique ID, you want to put your title in. Um, we were thinking that you know, when you put your title in, you, why don't we try to extract as much metadata as possible automatically from open databases? For example, IMDB, which is a, a movie database, which is exactly what we did here. It doesn't have to be IMDB, um, but in this case, uh, we, we chose that one. So let's say Tarzan. All right, so I'm, I'm ingesting Tarzan. And what it's doing right now is pinging the, the database, um, taking all that metadata, the poster, the short description, uh, the actors, where it was made, who made it, the writers, the year, and so on and so forth, and aggregates all that metadata automatically so that you don't have to type in manually. Um, and so it's a, it's a huge cost and time saving at this point. And then you add your uh, custom metadata. This is just uh, some categories that, uh, that you can add. You can, of course, modify this. Uh, and then you have a whole set of custom metadata that, uh, that you can add on to this. Um, in this case, we've put actors and tests, etc. It can be fields, uh, it can be radio buttons, it can be uh, check boxes that you specify in this um, uh, administration tool. Very, very easy to use. Now, this is it. For check-in, actually, of course, we can automate all this, but that's, that's pretty much it. But as you can see here, at the very bottom, we have something that's called a cost center. So remember when I mentioned that this is a digital asset management system um, and a resource manager as well as a monitoring tool? Well, actually, the cost center it comes with the concept that everything that you do, even a check-in, uh, can be associated to a, to a cost. For example, a check-in itself is a workflow. You are checking a content, you are creating a proxy, you're uh, adding uh, closed captioning, you're doing QC, et cetera, et cetera, depending on the workflow that you decided to, uh, to do. Um, and so what we're doing here is saying, okay, who, is, who, is, um, who are we going to assign this cost to? Right now it's just a check-in, but if it's a trends code, who are we going to assign this cost to? Let's say it's the OTT department, the web department, the production department. Um, and then once you assign that, what you can do, so right now I just checked in the content, by the way, and, and, and you can see the workflow working here, and I will show you later, um, just after this, uh, how, how the workflow is working. 
But just before we go to that, that cost center goes back to the monitoring. And in a very graphical way, it will represent you what you've been actually um, using, who's been, who, which department has been using the most of your resources. Uh, what type of work, uh, workflows have you been uh, using the most? Have, uh, was it check-ins? Were, were they trends codes? Were they publishing, uh, et cetera, et cetera? And so this tool, actually, this monitoring tool, actually um, also helps you to make business decisions when you want to expand your business, which department is using most resources, uh, where can we make um, you know, our, our infrastructure more efficient, and so on and so forth. So in a way, it's a very powerful uh, monitoring tool. And, also, and uh, you, know, you have all your logs of what everybody has been doing uh, so far, so you can spy on you know, what everybody has been doing. Of course, if you have a problem in a workflow, a transcoding is not working, you'll see it right here. Um, so let's go back to Media Workflow Master, the main UI. I've done my check-in, all right? So once I've done my check-in, you'll see what's going on uh, in, in, well, actually, it's kind of a history here. What have I been doing as far as workflows? I've been doing a, ch a check-in workflow right now with the Tarzan, right? So you're seeing here from start, um, it went through, in, through, through a condition, and then it was a false condition and went to a check-in. All of this can be uh, created through a very user-friendly uh, workflow editor. What is it doing right now? You just click on the red button, and it will tell you I'm transcoding. So it's creating a proxy. Um, and actually, this workflow is, is pretty unique in a way that we also incorporate uh, this task management. Remember when I said that we don't only do um, technical, um, technical resource management, but also human. This is, this is where uh, we're showing that. So, for example, when you're checking a content or when you're Q QCing a content, um, if something flags, like for example, uh, there might be some nudity, uh, you want someone to review the content um, before you, you go to the next step. And so this is exactly that. Once, if in the metadata there's a check or something like that, uh, it will go through the approval process, and then when the approval logs in, you remember when you, I had the to-do list? This is exactly where you would see all the tasks you have to do. You have to approve it, you have to review the content, write your comments, decline it, or approve it. Once it's approved, then it will go to the next step. So that's how we're also managing the, um, the, the, the human interaction that you actually need to, you know, an actual human has to check. So, in that way, we are also managing you know, the, the human tasks. Um, and here, what we, we show an example of uh, a workflow in this check-in workflow, an example of integration with um, a third party through our SOA um, architecture, uh, service-oriented architecture. So in this case, we're using our HPE um, idle speed-to-text uh, solution. So what it's actually doing, once it's going to check in the content and it's done creating the proxy, it's going to go through analyzing the voice and um, create a text out of it and actually create closed captioning file for it, which is a huge amount of um, cost saving and time saving because you don't have to go uh, back to a, a third party CC uh, company and, and wait for a one day, two day turnaround. This can be done on the fly and then you just need to QC it for, for minor corrections. Okay? So as you can see, this is just a function I've added uh, in, my, in my workflow. Uh, this can be a Selenium Flex file, for example, that I add here as a, uh, as a function and ask it to, um, to, to conform what I've, uh, what I've added markers for, for example. So once I've checked in my content, um, what you want to do is uh, browse it, right? So this is the asset management side. Let's go back to the home menu. This is my home menu. Uh, this button on the right is always available for you. It's, a, it's your search engine. So once you've uh, imported a, an asset, then you can easily search for it. I've ingested a lot of Deadpool today, um, as you can see. But um, once you've uh, found your asset, you can go into details. Uh, you will see all the metadata that uh, I, I gathered earlier from the, the database or the metadata that I, I added myself. Uh, you can, of course, look at the, uh, the proxy. Now, the proxy is not super high quality in here because we selected a lower bitrate to save some, some space here on my VM. 
Um, but, uh, but again, so all of this can, can be done through the thin client, through Chrome, Google Chrome, for example, uh, from any, any PC. So imagine you can do actually QC uh, from, from a Starbucks far, far away from, uh, from the station. Uh, check your, all your metadata, um, and then you can also create some logical assets. So what that is is basically marking, markouts, um, and then um, the conform side, it will be something like Selenium Fex file that will do it. How do we trigger those? Uh, well, actually, we have the concept of a basket. So you put everything in the basket, um, and everything that is in the basket, you can specify one workflow. So, for example, you want to uh, conform in, uh, in 720, in 1080, and maybe in 4K. Uh, in that case, you would put all the content you, would, you, want, you want to do that in the basket. The basket is available here on top. Open your basket, and then you would just uh, create a, um, a, a workflow for it. Okay, so that's how the, um, the, the manual workflows actually work. I've been showing you this uh, digital asset management side. I've been showing you the monitoring side. Uh, really quickly, I want to go through also the uh, technical resource management side. So what we're actually doing in Media Workflow Master is uh, controlling the OpenStack and, the, um, and, and VMware, for example, so that you can assign functions um, depending on, on your workflow. So let's say, for example, tomorrow I have a big event that will require a lot of uh, transcode nodes. In that case, I would go in this, uh, in this planning event from 7.30 to 9, PM, no, to, 9, to 9 a.m., specify I want five transcode nodes. At 7.30, it will actually turn on five nodes for transcoding from your, from your pool of resources. Uh, and at 9, it will actually turn it off. And all of this can be monitored through your, through your, uh, through your farm monitor. Uh, like I said, if tomorrow at 7.30 you need more transcoders, you will see three more nodes here appear and at nine, it will disappear. So in a way, um, you, for Media Workflow Master, you have the business layer where you, you manage your cost center, your uh, task management for, for human resources. You have your digital asset management system where you check in, you have your workflow, you transcode it, and so on and so forth until publishing. And then you also have this infrastructure layer uh, that controls your, uh, your pool of resources as, uh, as you need.